Hello and welcome to Man's Model Moments. Today's video is a tribute to my father, who passed away in 2019 and whose birthday would have been on the 4th of October. He and I had a rather turbulent relationship, but one thing that we both shared was an interest in military equipment, especially aircraft. It was him that got me into modelling in the first place, and some of my earliest memories are of making the old bag kits that you could buy in newsagents and other shops in the 1970s. My dad was a true baby boomer, born shortly after the end of World War II and growing up in the 50s and 60s. Living in Lincolnshire, close to RAF Scampton, we were very familiar with Britain's V-bombers, and my dad loved this era of military aircraft. One of his absolute favourite aircraft was the English Electric, later BAC, Lightning. I actually got the 148th Airfix kit shortly after it came out, but never had a real incentive to build it until now. But it seemed fitting to do this, now I have the channel, as a tribute to my dad. Now, as I mentioned, my dad loved the original Lightning, even though later Marks were better in many ways, so I wanted to represent the more colourful era of the Mark 1s than the all-over green or two-tone camouflage of the later F6. As I have the F2A stroke F6 kit, however, I'm going to go over the building of an F2A, which were aircraft upgraded from F1 to F6 standard in many respects, but they retained the original nose cannon and were not able to take the overwing fuel tanks. I chose the F2A as many aircraft retained some of the colourful F1 schemes after conversion, at least for a short time, so I could model an aircraft which combined the enhanced characteristics of the F6, but in the spirit of the F1. In choosing the exact aircraft to model, after a bit of research I chose XN793, the personal mount of Air Commander John Mitchell, who led 92 Squadron out of RAF Guttersloh in West Germany from 1971 to 1973. This aircraft has both a fair few period photo references and has also been modelled numerous times. In fact, the Airfix kit includes decals for this aircraft, although for it being painted an overall dark green from late 1973 onwards. So on to the kit itself. The Airfix 148 F2A-F6 was a very welcome and well-received kit at the time and was pretty much state-of-the-art, with crisp mouldings, panel lines and riveting detail. The instructions show it had a pretty detailed cockpit with a full ejector seat and pilot, but I wanted to go a bit further when I bought the kit and invested in a CMK resin and photo etch detail set as well, something I'm grateful to my earlier self for given the rationale for this video. The cockpit is pretty much the only area of this kit that needs extra detail and the only one that's really visible as well. The CMK set includes a vacuform canopy, but I decided not to use this, opting for the very clear kit items instead and as the photo etch framing hides any thickness issues, and the vac form items are actually tinted rather than completely clear, I think it was definitely the right choice. The first step with the CMK set is to separate out and clean up the resin items, which I did with a mixture of my scalpel to carve off flash and level areas, and my rotary tool to remove casting blocks. As always, be very careful when using tools that create resin dust, as it's pretty nasty, which is why I try to minimise any sanding of the material. The other main thing to say about any resin set is to be sure to test fit and check constantly, as generally the detail on these items means that they are made to a pretty tight tolerance, and it's easy to end up with parts that don't fit properly or a fuselage that won't seal around such a set. Constant test fitting is key to avoid this frustration. Speaking of frustration, let's move on to the photo etch parts, which are always a fiddle and require a lot of patience as a wrong move can easily flick a nigh impossible to find piece of tiny etched brass into the ether or superglue it to your tweezers or any other number of calamities. Here you can see I'm taking some time to bend and fold these photo etched rudder pedals using some square ended reverse grip tweezers and my scalpel, as it really doesn't help to try and rush any of this. When it's all in the final shape, it can be super glued into position and then repeated with the second pedal before adding them to the resin cockpit tub. The ejection seat only requires the ejection handles to be added from photo etch with some super glue and accelerator before another test fitting to ensure it all sits correctly. The CMK set also features a resin replacement for the rear cockpit where the canopy hinges in, which also includes the start of the aircraft's spine. To ensure this sits correctly, I temporarily fitted the fuselage halves together with clamps before fitting the replacement part to the port side with a little super glue, ensuring the fit was flush on both sides and sitting correctly in the interior. 
Once dry, I could then take the fuselage apart and reinforce the bond with more super glue from behind to make sure that this piece wouldn't come free during assembly. The next step was to fit the resin sidewalls, which meant removing any of the moulded on details on the kit parts. I mainly did this with my scalpel, only coming with my rotary tool afterwards to smooth out and deburr the resulting sides. Some more test fitting, repetition on the other side, and even more test fitting. Some more rotary work eventually got me to where I was happy that I had everything where it needed to be to enable me to move on to painting the cockpit items. Lightning interiors were grey with a black trim, but the grey used is a greenish grey, so I started with quite a dark green grey sprayed over all the cockpit items, including those cemented to the kit parts. I came in with another coat when that had dried to ensure I had good coverage over the resin. You can also see I've made and attached the air intake at this point, which was necessary to properly test fit the resin cockpit tub. Once the initial coats had dried, I then added some Pro Acryl Bright Warm Grey to the mix, and went over the items again to create some illusion of depth in the parts and lighten the tone overall. Again, I did this a couple of times to ensure decent tonal variation. Next up was to hand paint all the detail items. For all the black, I used Golden So Flat Black, For the ejection seat I used a variety of browns and blue for the straps and pads. Once that was all done, it was time to give everything an oil wash. I used a mix of brown and black that I made myself, there's a link to the video on that above, and just went over everything quite liberally. When this has had a chance to dry, I then went in with my eyeshadow applicator to remove the majority of the wash from all the raised surfaces, further increasing the contrast and illusion of depth in the pieces. For the instrument panel, I used a piece of white plaster card cut to shape to go behind the pre-marked film, attaching that with white glue, and doing the same with the etched brass overlay before cementing that into the cockpit tub with super glue. With the cockpit tub finished, it could be glued into place in the right half of the fuselage above the air intake. More test fitting of course to ensure everything works well, and here you can see I've also added my nose weights, both inside the nose radar cone as well as above and below the air intake. I wasn't quite sure how much to add here, but with the wings swept back and the tail being quite high, I edged on the side of caution and crammed as much in as I could here. I just hope the undercarriage can stand it. All the test fitting and weighting complete, the fuselage was then joined up, clamped and allowed to set. Whilst waiting for that to dry, the cannon ports needed adjusting. The kit parts were pretty weak in this regard to be honest, the lightning cannon ports are pretty pronounced and so needed drilling out to give a better look than the shallow grooves on the kit parts. Fortunately my wow stick drill worked wonders here. With these parts then cemented to the body, you can see they're much more the part than the originals. We can also have a quick look to see what is visible of our handiwork, now it's all encased. And do another quick test fitting before moving on. The Lightning doesn't have a lot of areas of possible detailing, but the undercarriage does feature a pretty prominent brake line which runs down the leg and loops for the scissor join before joining to the wheel hub, so I used 0.3mm diameter lead wire to represent this, tacking it on with super glue to follow the appropriate path. Back to the main body now, and it's time to put the wings and tail on. The Lightning has a distinctive wing droop, 
and the airfix kit captures it well, and this is a painless part of the assembly, and I assembled one wing and the tail, allowing these to dry before fixing the final wing on the other side. Horizontal stabiliser placement is also pretty straightforward. Now there were some prominent gaps with the cannon port inserts and some unavoidable minor alignment issues around the forward fuselage seams that needed some filling, but nothing too onerous. I did my usual sprue goo application with the sculpting tool to minimise cleanup work afterwards. The intake and exhaust cowling were both actually polished steel on the Lightning, so I finished these areas using Green Stuff Chrome Paint over a Vallejo glossy black base coat. With the sprue goo dry, it was sanded carefully to avoid erasing panel line detail wherever possible. The Lightning is definitely starting to take shape now. The panel lines that did need rescribing, I did with a small, fine razor saw blade, trying to keep these to about the same depth as the kit lines wherever possible. Final details on the canopy were added in the form of photo etch framing, as well as the forward instrument panel cover. It's worth test fitting this piece with canopy to ensure you don't glue it too far forward, as the resin is thicker than the kit part. I also added the heads up display sight from a small piece of the tinted vac form canopy base, and the forward canopy and the ejection seat were then glued in position before masking. The final piece of masking on the canopy is to cover the joins between the various masking materials with artist masking fluid, which just ensures you don't get any creep through around these interfaces. When all of that was dry, I sprayed the entire model with automotive aluminium paint, as well as all the other external surfaces such as the gear doors and small aerials and so on. I then masked off the body and wings to expose the tail and spine, and airbrushed them with a mix of Army Painter Deep Blue and Games Workshop Fenris Grey to create a close match to the round or blue of the aircraft, as you can see on this fin flash. I then carefully airbrushed the anti-glare panel with Vallejo Glossy Black, as well as the canopy. This was also used on the cannon port areas, but just misted on, since the photographs show that these areas are not solid black. I'd also sprayed and subsequently masked off the Radome with Tamiya RLM Grey. The next step requires unmasking these forward areas, as you can see I'm doing here. XN793 has some great photos, including this close-up of the nose, and you can see these very prominent panels and exhausts. These are not featured on the FX kit, and I see them being missed off many models I've seen of this aircraft too, despite how obvious they are. Fortunately, they're easy to recreate by scribing using one of my panel guides and a scribing tool. The most important thing here is to select the right size and the right location. Once you've got that, it only takes a moment or two to actually scribe the panel line. I then use the scalpel to clean up any burrs or edges along the panel, trying to get any of the scraping of the paint on the inside of that panel. To make the exhaust, I just use the scribing tool to make a mark in the plastic where the exhaust should be, and that acts as a centre point and anchor for my drill. I'm using my wow stick, but a pin vise would be fine here too. I'm not going all the way through the plastic here, just marking into it and giving it a slight angle as seen on the picture.
Unfortunately, the paint on the tail of the aircraft didn't like the automotive finish much and beaded up a bit, giving it a kind of an orange peel texture at the base of the tail fin. This looked much worse than it was, and sanding with a wet 800 grit sanding stick removed it back to level, and then I just misted over another couple of coats over the top just for the final finish. With the masking peeled off, it was time to add some wear and tear to the spine. From photographs, the latches and screws on the spine of this aircraft didn't keep paint on them for long, so I gently removed the top blue layer from the harder automotive aluminium coat using a scribing tool. With that done, it was time for decaling. The FX decals are extensive, but as the decals for XN793 are for the green paint scheme, some of them are not appropriate for this aircraft, and some markings shown on the aircraft are absent. Rather than purchase a dedicated decal sheet, I opted to make the required decals myself, and this is what led to the delay in my project. I had clear laser printer decal sheet, but not white, which I needed for the tail fin flashes, the info panels and the squadron markings. I did try painting decal film white and then printing on them, but one horrific printer jam later convinced me that that was a bad idea, so I had to wait for the new decal paper sheet. Making your own decals is not that hard, but it is beyond the scope of this video. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a video on that in the future. I made decals for the fin flashes, the A for Alpha tail markings in white, because the kit ones are yellow, John Mitchell's name, info boards below the squadron markings, and the checkered squadron markings themselves, as well as the white arrow and some other small touches. Overall, I was pretty happy with how they turned out. With that done, I gave the aircraft an overall coat of pledge, and then it was time to do some weathering. So for weathering this model, I'm going to go to my trusty oil wash of black and brown. But rather than an overall coat, I'm just going very carefully into the rivets and the individual panel lines, just to make sure that I'm not getting too much of the wash over the rest of the paint finish. So when I come to clean up, it doesn't stain the overall paint finish too much. So here you can see that's done. I've gone over when it's dry and then just removed those again, just in the way I normally do with the eyeshadow makeup sponge. And you can see we've got subtle staining on the panel lines and in all of the rivets without changing the overall tone of the model. You can see we're just picking up out those details, both above and below. Here are those panels and just the flaps, for instance, and the aerolons. I've also attached the landing gear here. So with that we're down to small details, like the air intake ring. The fire streak missiles, which I've made, they don't pose any problems at all. And then small detail pieces, like the navigation lights on the sides of the wings. Here I'm just using Tamiya Clear, Red and Green. It's just on the starboard side, just doing the red. With all those pieces completed, we can take a look at the final finished model.
So conclusions on the Airfix 148 scale Lightning. It's a really nice kit. It's not perfect, it does have a few little issues, but I wouldn't have any hesitation in recommending it if you do find it. It's not in production at the moment, but Airfix regularly reproduce these kits and re-release them. So if you do see it in the future, pick it up. The examples on eBay and things are quite expensive, but if you really like this subject, it's a really good model kit to pick up and has great scope for detailing as you've seen. Anyway, I think my dad would have liked the model. He loved the lightning, and I hope he rests in peace. That's all for this instalment of Man's Model Moments. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button, subscribe to the channel for more like it, and share this video with others you think would also enjoy it. You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And if you're feeling generous, then I also have a Patreon, which is absolutely the best way of helping me to grow the channel and produce more content like this. With that, I hope you have plenty of modeling moments of your own, and I look forward to welcoming you on the next video.